What is up, everybody? It is Dr. Vibe here. As always, I like to say you're blessed and highly favored. You're a magnet for miracles and you're a solution for someone's problem. I'm the host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show and involved in many other different online entities. We'll get to that at the end because I'm not the star. Right now, the little lady in the other square is the star. And uh, also one other thing, I'm a certified empowerment coach. I've had the privilege and blessing of knowing this lady for probably three years. Mm -hmm. Three or four, I would say. Three or four years. Yes. And from the first time I met her, she always had positive energy. She always had love. And she was on a mission, a positive mission that is every time I get her to share with me, it's going to a higher level. And I'm so humbled that she's letting me to be in the caboose of the cuisine noir train. <laughs> He's so silly. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. And it's so nice to see her visually. We don't get it. I don't, maybe one or two times, I think we've done one or two tests. We've only had a chance to see each other visually maybe over the last few months. Exactly. This is all to say we are blessed and highly favored to have V. Cherie Williams of Cuisine Noir Magazine on Blab for the first time. I know. What it took to get her on here, <laughs> people never, you know, but I was persistent and consistent saying one day, one way, some way, somehow it's going to happen. And it's happening. Oh, no, that's and too funny. But she's here and we are so, I'm jacked because this is another milestone. I love celebrating positive milestones with people. And uh, this is just fantastic. So, V. Cherie, how are you doing today? I am doing well. Excited about this week. Lots of good stuff going on. And excited to be doing my first blab. Yay! <laughs> and, and many more to come. Exactly. Uh, I don't know if I'll be part of them. But if, if, I, if, I, if you need to be, I will be. Because there is a whole, can I say the word diaspora of individuals that have either been on in your magazine or will be in your magazine exactly that will will need to have on this platform to share their story and provide encouragement enlightenment education and empowerment too mm -hmm. for the masses out there so for the people that don't know you can you share a little background about yourself sure so i am the publisher and editor of cuisine noir magazine we are the country's first black food, wine, and travel magazine. So we really focus on telling those stories uh, about Blacks in the industry from the diaspora, as you pointed out. So, um, you know, we have a long line of where we are in the world. So, you know, what's going on in, of course, the States, in Canada, over in Brazil, Puerto Rico, Peru, wherever we are, Colombia, all of that, and just bringing those stories with a cultural lens. So, um, I've been at the head for about, it'll be seven years in September, which I can't believe. And so it's been a, a great journey, um, still a long journey to go, but I'm thankful for where I'm at and all that we've done and all the people such as yourself that we've been able to meet. So, so it's been great. It's been wonderful. Excellent. I'd like to thank Sandy for joining in and watching the conversation. Sandy, okay. if you have any questions or if you want to come on and take a seat, you're more than welcome. How did the magazine fall into your lap? <laughs> Good question. Yes. Well, back in 2005, I actually met the publisher or the founder rather, uh, Richard Pinnell. And we were working on a project together. And then after that, he approached me because uh, I was really, my background is communications, PR, marketing, um, and always a writer. And so he had approached me about doing some PR for the magazine. And I just thought it was so unique and such a great niche. And so uh, we worked together to launch it online because uh, in 2007, um, because that's when everything was taking its shift. Oh, tell Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. Um, that's when um, everything was shifting to go online. And so we launched it. And then just in 2009, I uh, came with some different creative ideas and switched hands and took the publisher seat. And here I am ever since. Now, before Cuisine Noir, was there any magazines of its type in America? Not that we know of. There were, you, you, well, of course we know about the Black Enterprise, the Ebony, the Jet, uh, Essence, of course. 
Sure. Um, but all of them are either, you know, black enterprise is business or lifestyle, but nothing really tailored toward blacks and food, wine and travel. And so that's where we really taken off. And to this day, you know, we still have that niche, which I'm very thankful for, because that's truly all we focus on um, is making sure that we bring the, the greatest stories, those untold stories, those fun stories uh, from that food and that food lens, that culinary lens. So when you took over the magazine, what did your parents say? You know, it was funny because they were all, they're always supportive of me. They know that I take risk, but I take calculated risk. And so, you know, they were really behind me. They still are some of my biggest fans today, if not the biggest fans today. And um, they're just with me 100% whenever, you know, a print issue comes out. My dad is the first one that got it into the store. <laughs> and so and so they've just been wonderful and just always telling me to keep going, don't give up, keep going. So can you share with our audience and especially we have oh we got three. Thank you. People who joined on Danielle and Jay. Uh, thanks for stopping by. If you have any questions, you can certainly type them in on the side, or if you want to come in and take a seat, we're here sh uh, sharing with Vishri Williams, who I've known for about three, three and a half years, publisher, tour de force of Cuisine Noir magazine, the only African American magazine dedicated to blacks and food, wine and travel. So when, tell us about the early days of your magazine, the <laughs> the fun times. <laughs> oh, those are the fun times? Yeah, I think it was yeah. the fun times before things really started getting serious. Um, you know, it was fun discovering what is out there. And I always tell my story. I'm from the Midwest and I'm, you know, grew up with just typical foods that you eat in a black household. So when I moved from the Midwest out here to Chicago or to um, San, Fran or San Francisco, the Bay Area, it was totally different, but I couldn't think of any better place to be because of how California is just farm to table fresh. Um, if you're gonna make wine, this is the place to make wine. And so my culinary journey really started growing. So I would say in the beginning, I was that writer focused on telling the stories, but now I'm just in there with the food just as anybody else and I love it. So in that beginning, that was a, that was a difference for sure. Um, and then just, again, just learning about who is out there introducing, trying to build relationships, trying to build those partnerships. Um, and I think the seeds that we've planted every year are starting to sprout. So I'm very excited. Can you share with us one or two moments early on that told you that you were doing the right thing? You know, it's one of those gut feelings. Um, but when you see the encouragement, you see all of the, the emails. Thank you for the publication. I love the publication. Thank you for telling the stories. You know, that is those words of encouragement always lets me know that we're on the right track. And when other publications recognize you, uh, even though you're a small fish in their pond, because when they have so many years on you, um, but it it was, you know, just that confirmation, even a confirmation today that I received on a phone call of just saying, you know what, thank you for showing a side that's not shown out there um, and that is celebrated. And so um, those moments and those things always keep me going. Definitely in the hard times, was, too. Absolutely. And uh, she has shared some of the hard times with me and she does go through some some challenging ones, but she, she finds a way. Who was the first, I'd like to say, big interview that you had with the magazine? I don't think I've ever asked you that. So who was that first big one that you said, bam? You know, it had to be Dr. Maya Angelou. I was blessed to, wow. to talk to her uh, when her second cookbook came out. And she was so gracious. And I remember she said, I look forward to reading this in Cuisine Noir. And I just about flew out of the floor because it was like to hear her actually say the publication name. It was just so awesome. So that was definitely like one of my highlight interviews forever. And I still have that recording to this day. Why was she a deliberate pick? Was it someone you wanted to get? And did she say no automatically or did it take some time? It didn't at all. Um, I, if I can recall, I did reach out. I saw that her book was coming out and I reached out and it, was, it wasn't it was hard at all. Not at all. It was one of the easiest interviews to secure and do that I've had. 
So, so she was, um, she was just awesome. Just totally awesome. So you get Maya Angelou and I'm sure people started really paying attention, but what were some of the early challenges you had in the journey? You, you, um, getting people to, of course, know who we are, uh, to know that we're serious about what we're trying to come in terms of the journalism that we're trying to come to. Um, and, you know, and just, again, I think the biggest challenge is, is just being up against the great publications such as Essence, Food and Wine, Black Enterprise, all of them that have over 30 years on top of us. And so they have their audiences nailed down. And so we were, we're still growing that audience to say, look at us, look at us, we're here. Um, and so, you know, that that was that's one of the challenges. Uh, and as a result, when it comes to, you know, your advertisers or whoever, they're like, well, we love what you do, but you're not big enough. You know, and so those are challenges that we have to sort of overcome uh, and just keep moving forward. So. You had mentioned earlier on in our conversation that your background is PR and communications. When did you cross over to the world of cooking? <laughs> because uh, we have had conversations for a while. And I know a little while back you said, Dr. Vibe, I'm going to have to get into the kitchen. <laughs> what what made you cross that barrier? Well, you know, I, I like to cook, but I never would cook. Whenever we would do a test kitchen, I've always had my professional chefs do that. And so, but the more I became comfortable uh, working with them and developing my own style and my flavor profiles, I became more comfortable. And so now, you know, if we're at an event, I have no problem putting together a recipe, testing out a recipe because I'm like, hmm, I'm not that bad. And so, you know, just confidence building, um, looking at where the brand want, I want to take the brand, uh, being a, an ambassador, a spokesperson for the brand. If I appear somewhere and I want to make a recipe, um, then I want to be able to do it myself. So it's just, you know, it just was honing in some skills and then being comfortable with coming forward and um, bringing that out. So, Well, I'd be remiss if I didn't sh you have you share some of the wonderful places that you've been Ooh. to during this Cousine Noir experience. So we'll start international, then we'll come home ground. So share with our audience some of the wonderful journeys that you've been to outside of America? So I had the chance to go to Indonesia, Jakarta, back in December of 2012. And that's one of my favorite places. I mean, the, the people themselves are just so friendly and warm and just open your arms up to anybody that's coming into their country. And so really enjoyed Indonesia and actually talking about uh, taking perhaps some Cuisine Noir uh, readers to Indonesia next year. Um, can I come? Can I come? Definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um, and then I got a chance to go to Chile, and that was wonderful. Just they're really coming up on their food scene. Their wines are amazing. If you haven't had a chance to taste any of the Chilean wines, I love them. So that has been a blessing as well. Um, and then to the Bahamas was another great place uh, that I got to go. And then we took readers to Cuba last year. So that was a, a memorable trip. Can you share some of the wonderful events or places that you've been into within America? You've done a lot of stuff I within know, America. I know, I know. You know, when we were doing the travel and adventure shows going around, we hit seven cities from the West Coast all the way over to D.C. and Philadelphia. And those were just great. And really becoming acquainted with Philadelphia, it was really nice um, because I was there as a child. Um, I flew in there for um, Obama's first inauguration, but then I didn't necessarily stay. So it was really great to sort of see Philly again. Um, but you know what? The other city, I love New York. I mean, you, there's nothing like New York. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I really want to get back to New York again. And then, you know, going to um, Arizona, different, Las, Las Vegas, which, you know, I always go during the off season time is always fun. Um, is a great trip. And then, of course, Miami. You can't live without going to Miami. So nice. I got to come up to see you, Dr. Vibe. Oh, my goodness. It's coming. The day will come. The day will come. Well, I I may see you before you see <laughs> <I know>. me. <laughs> we ain't going to go there. That's up to you to talk about, not me. But let so with with this wonderful journey that you've taken, actually, let me roll back a bit. 
wasn't the magazine first a traditional publication and then you went online? No, it was the opposite way. We start we oh, went online and then we went traditionally into print and people would ask, well, why do you need to do that? And still there's a, a questions about that today. I think long a print will always have a place in people's hearts, no matter what people say. You still have people who will don't mind reading it on their Kindle, on their iPad or whatever. But then you loved, you have people such as myself that, you know what, if I'm laying by the pool or by the uh, the water uh, at the beach, I want to flip through some paper and I don't want to be connected electronically. So print will always have a home in our heart. Um, and I still think in our reader's heart. So, you know, definitely. And then also from a strategy standpoint, it was cheaper to build the audience and see what the demand and the response would be online and then take it into print to see what the response would be. So I'm definitely happy with that strategy that we did. Excellent. When you came into this journey at the beginning, can you share with us what you feel the state of African Americans or blacks in those areas of travel, wine and food. And what's the situation today? Has it gotten better? Has it stayed the same? Have you seen progress? Share with us a bit on that. I think that um, in terms of the awareness of who is who is definitely um, become more noticeable. And I hope that we've had a chance to contribute to that. Um, as you know, we host a directory online about Blacks and wine, beer, and spirits all over the world, all the way from California to South Africa. And so hopefully we're raising that profile. Um, and so that's what we want to continue to do with the publication is just to raise the profile of some of the um, the chefs of color that are out here doing amazing things. The sommeliers who happen to be Black, the chefs that are doing big things in their cities. And so, you know, I think it's a good time for everyone in the industry, because there's still this love affair, this revolution that's going on with food just really being in the star, no matter how hard the economy may hit, people are still dining out, food is still going to be something that we navigate to in, in the, um, the kitchen, at home, we bond over it. So food is always a special place. So I think it's a good time for everybody all around. Where do you feel is opportunity, though, for growth and positive change? Because I know we have a number of these conversations mm -hmm. offline, but where do you feel there's some some growth opportunities and needed growth? You know what? We're excited. The craft beer industry. I think that is one place where uh, people of color can definitely start to go in and um, have an opportunity. We're definitely seeing, you know, there's still maybe two dozen or so under under 30 when it comes to black winemakers. But when it comes to either blacks or Latinos or any other uh, person of color in the craft beer industry, definitely there's an opportunity there. So, you know, we're going to be addressing that at our conference um, in September, just that, but that is a huge opportunity in the marketplace and in the industry overall. I always like to get with success stories, what it's taken you to pull together a team. So can you give some, shine some light on your wonderful team? My wonderful team. You know, I was blessed because a lot of them are people that I knew. Um, a lot of, especially my, my designer um, who does our um, online issue. He, ha we've been together since like 2006. And so he's just been a wonderful supporter, believes in the magazine and him and his wife have just, they've been awesome. And then just anyone who was come up. So, you know, uh, again, building the relationships, writers that I had a relationship before in the past, and then as well as writers who come along and then those relationships have stayed. So I'm very happy with the, the talent that we attract, the writers that we attract. And I just try to do my best to make sure that I reach out, say hello, how you doing? And um, letting them know that I, I appreciate them. So, and I, I, I don't, we haven't discussed this online before, so I'm gonna pull this one out because it's a blab thing today. <laughs> you have a, you have a full-time job. Uh, no. Do you go part of? No, you don't any. Okay, mm -hmm. my correction. So this is you're sunk everything into this. Yes. When you started off, were you employed yes. full time? 
Okay, let me roll back. So when did when did you make that decision? And do you remember the moment you made that decision to say, I'm going full out for Cuisine Noir? <laughs> You know, that was probably in the last year or so. And and I think you just, you know, you have to, you know, you'll see it go over that hump and take that risk and just do it. And so you just have to, one of those feelings that you know, that you know, that you know. And so, you know, I still do a lot of projects, um, but still I have to focus full time on the magazine. So. Right. Okay. If I, there's some one, well, all of you who are watching wonderful here, if you have any questions, type them in on the side, the blab feature with a forward slash Q is not working, but certainly type in any questions. Or if you want to jump on and you have any questions about food, wine, and travel, there's not too many more better <laughs> people you're going to get answers from than this lady here. Cause she's been all around the place. Let's talk about something coming up in September. Let's get some background about a big event coming up in September. So I'm going to have you yes, share Yes, and then it. I know we're going to talk again when we announce the speakers and the workshops. Um, but just through this journey as my as a business owner myself, um, you, know, I, you know, there's those moments that I'm wondering, am I the only one going through this? Or I'll meet someone and I'm like, you know what, that person should know that person. And so this event is definitely tailored to anyone in the food, wine industry, food, wine and spirits industry, whether you have um, a business you're thinking about, you just started or you're thinking about starting one. We want to bring everybody together, give you that empowerment, give you that encouragement, have those conversations that you may not be able to have, you know, access to. And let's figure this out. Um, because in the end, we want everyone to grow a strong business and we want everyone's business to leave a legacy for why you're building it. Uh, so whether you want it to, to pass it down to the family, your child, whatever the case may be, we want to make sure that you that you are the next, you know, Ghirardelli chocolates or, you know, craft brand, all of those, Walt Disney, all of those. We want your brand to be just as big and have a legacy as well. So so very excited. September 16th and 17th in San Francisco. Uh, registration is on uh, is open. And so everyone can go online to cuisinoirmag.com and all the details are there. And we're just looking forward to a great weekend. Excellent. Had this idea been on your mind for a while? Yes. I've been doing, I've been planning this for over a year now. And what, when was the moment that you said, you know what, this has to be done? The moment I would say, you know, just conversation after conversation, um, and then so just having conversations with different publicists and different businesses. And I said, you know what, let me let me I'm going to move forward and do this. And then the other thing, too, is, you know, everyone is like, what do you want to do uh, as a way of extending the brand? And we don't need another food and wine magazine. The market is saturated with those. And so I'm passionate about being an entrepreneur and I'm passionate about helping others with their business. Uh, as much as I can, because uh, I'm still learning and growing myself. And so it just makes sense. Without getting too much into some of the topics that are going to be addressed in the conference, what are some of the common challenges you hear from your readers who are involved in the industry that are not where they want to be? Always money. Money is a top, uh, top thing. Money and lack of help or manpower. Those are, I would say, two things. And then if you have manpower, having the right manpower. So those are always two things that really um, there are challenges. And so those are, of course, two things that we're going to be addressing. Also, does the conversation ever come up about mentorship? It comes up with me. <laughs> but <laughs> okay. I always say, um, hello, oh, that's great. Um, I always try to refer, do you know this person? Do you know that person? I mean, myself, I have counselors that work with me. Um, you know, I have people that I go to, to, you know, help out with the business things. Because we all need one, someone like yourself, Dr. Vibe, who's an empowerment coach. We need someone who is, you know, maybe been in the same business that we're in that can help um, and help us work through those situations. So I may not say it um, directly, but definitely encourage it because I know I have my mentors. 
So what what is your thoughts about the marketplace right now in regards to the service is like, okay, I'm going to give a real life situation. So Vishari goes out to a restaurant. What is she looking for to see, to judge if a restaurant is on it or not? Just, you know, are you acknowledged when you come into the door? That's I think is a customer service thing. I know, you know, people may be helping other people, but just a simple acknowledgement, I think goes a long, long way. Um, and then just being, you know, I, I try to be very simple because I don't want to be on all the time when I go out to eat. Um, but, you know, you look at the service. The main thing is the service from who is taking care of you. Um, and then are they getting the order right? Are they how is it coming out in the presentation? So, again, I try not to be too harsh on anybody. Um, I just want good service like anybody else. So. What's the best meal you've had out in the Ooh. last week? Oh, man. You know, it's funny because I'm very simple when it comes to food. I love just good stuff, simple stuff. Hmm. You know, I was craving some good old barbecue. <laughs> I mean, so I had some good old barbecue brisket. You just can't go wrong with that. You know, it's simple, but sometimes I don't get it that often. Um, but, you know, I would have to say that was that's just one of my favorite that I had in the last week or so with some good old barbecue brisket. And share with us one or two experiences from your international travels of some food, because I remember a while back you told me about a food experience in Singapore. I can't remember exactly what it was, but you were saying you had an incredible it was either Singapore or Bahamas. You had a really great food experience. Well, I would say. Oh, the one that really, really sticks out is when I was in Italy. Now, that one was fantastic. Um, who doesn't love Italian food? Uh, so I just, that's like one of my favorites. Um, but definitely, hmm, what was a good international meal? Man, I'm not that I, I'm trying to think. I'm trying not, my head, my mind is going through every place to try to, to think about it. You know, everything is so different. The food from Indonesia was different from the food, obviously, in the Bahamas. Definitely was different from the food in Cuba or even in um, Chile. You know, this was a very unique experience. When we were in Chile, we went to this restaurant and we didn't know what we were going to eat. And so they brought out eight small dishes paired with wines. And I mean, it went just up the gamut, um, starting very small with a salad, all the way up to like a tartar, a deer tartar is what I had. So that was a very unique uh, experience because again, it's just like, what what are we going to have next? And so, you know, out of everything, um, that was probably one of the more memorable ones, especially like I said, when they brought up that deer tartar, it's like, oh my goodness. So deer tartar. Tar <laughs> Never, never heard of that. That is just mm -hmm. wow. Okay, I can I can see it tasted very good. <laughs> where's where are some where are some places you haven't been to that you want to? I oh you to. know what? Okay, scratch that. I do have a fun one though. Uh, so back in Brazil, okay. I love Brazilian food. And so there was just this one place called like Gorlitos Grill or so. And we just sat in there for days and ate, ate, ate. So definitely um, on the top of my eating spots is Brazil, for sure. But uh, places that I haven't been, seriously, Toronto. Haven't been to Toronto. So uh, that's on my list. Um, I haven't been to France, believe it or not. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I'm saying it and it's true. So that's on my list. Germany, I studied German throughout high school and college. So I need to um, get over into Germany and take like a two week trip around there. Um, I want to get to South Africa, Mozambique, Kenya, and some other places in um, Africa. I definitely, I love Thai. Yes, Sandy. So I would love to get over to Thailand oh. um, to definitely do that because Thai food is like at the top of my list. Uh, for sure. Um, nice. And then, you know what, I, I, you know, even though there's some advisories and things out there, but there's definitely some great parts of Mexico, Puerto Rico and the Caribbean to get to. Um, so I, I still got a lot of traveling to do, Dr. Vibe, a lot. I hear you. I hear you. 
what words who pe- for people who want to get in the industry, what words of advice, words of wisdom do you give them at this time where more and more people are going into entrepreneurship? But one of the, I think for me, one of the toughest areas of entrepreneurship is either in the mm-hmm. food, wine, or beverage because it's very competitive. The margins mm-hmm. are small and it ain't easy. You know, you have to have patience and you have to be passionate about what you're doing. Um, So with anything lead, I I was watching uh, Oprah's um, Super Soul Sunday. And one of the questions was, what is your intention? So what is your intention for getting into your business and doing your business? And I think you have to lead in with that, Um, you know, because this can't be a get quick, easy thing or get rich quick. It's, It's just it's not. And so you've got to be able to, again, know your intention, know what you're trying to do, why you're doing it. And if you truly believe in it, stick in it for the long haul. So, you know, no one I I was just thinking about this. No one truly knows your vision and, and what is inside of you and what that vision is you're trying to birth and bring forth. So it's very hard for someone to say, you know what, I'm I'm not seeing what you're you know, trying to produce, you're not supposed to, it's not your vision. You know what I mean? So within that, you have to know that, you know what, I'm going to keep going no matter what. Um, I, no one else has necessarily see the vision, the way that you see it, you need those supporters, but you just need to keep moving forward. So. What are some things you're wanting to achieve with the magazine going forward? You know, we definitely want to get um, back into print. Um, That's one of the challenges out there. Um, But we're we're confident um, that this year is going to be a good year. So that's what I want to achieve. And I I want to I, I want to continue to grow the magazine. I definitely want to make sure it has more of the diaspora angle to it. We're doing good, but there's still a lot of room to do with that. Uh, which I think is fascinating and, and wonderful. Um, so that's where I want to see the magazine go in the future. And then again, I want to really get into the homes of the home cooks. Not everybody wants to be a chef, but it doesn't mean that Uncle Jeffrey can't burn when he needs to burn. But Uncle Jeffrey is perfectly fine working for whoever he's working for. Um, so, you know, I want to be able to tell those stories more and, and share those because those are the people that are influencing the people who are pursuing their careers in culinary. So, so we still got a lot to do in terms terms of content and fun stuff that we want to do. So nice. Uh, if anyone have any questions, come on in, join. We've got about 10 minutes left before Vishri has to make a move. <laughs> so if you have any questions for her, would love you to jump in on the seat. Danielle, Moto JT, Leyland, Ahmed, uh, Phoenicia, this is your top. Oh, here we go. He's going to. Ahmed is coming on in. Thank you so much, Ahmed, for coming on in. Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? Fantastic. Yeah. I just just have a quick question. Um, I'm in the finance. Um, How do I connect with clients that are wine drinkers and I'm not a wine drinker? You know, that's very interesting because we have a couple of winemakers who actually started making wine before they even started drinking. And so that would be uh, Jubilani, who has Highberry Wines. He's from South Africa. He was making wine before he even started, as well as um, Bertoni Faustine. So what I would say to you is make sure that. Um, so are you doing events? Is that what you're doing and, and bringing in those clientele? I do. And I also attend events where clients are drinking wine. Okay. Well, you know what? So I would say as if you start that conversation with them, I wouldn't, I still will be interested in talking to, with you about uh, whatever you have to offer services wise, even though you don't drink wine. So do you know a little bit of, you know, something to start a conversation? So if I'm holding a, a glass of red wine, would you feel comfortable saying, oh, are you drinking a Marlowe or a Pinot Noir? Would you be, in, can you start a little conversation that way maybe? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you better learn, brother, if you want to crack that mark. Like that, I think, and I think Vishri said a very important point. Do some research, or if you're going to one of these events, talk to the person who's running the event and just find out a little bit. You know, it's one thing to go to war naked. It's one thing, another thing to go with you have a little artillery. Yeah. So you don't have to be a wine drinker to relate right. with them. Yeah. If you're a businessman, 
find find some common things. Obviously, the conversation doesn't have to be all totally about wine because when you go to these events, they're not talking wine 24, 24, 24, 24. They have a life, but obviously to know a little bit and be able to relate to them on that certainly could break the conversation. Exactly. And then if you need any wine recommendations, so say you have a client, you know they love wine, we're happy to give you recommendations to send for that gift, there you whatever go. the case may be. So we can uh -huh. help you there. But yeah, just having that little bit of, of they see a red or a white or just asking what that is or so, I think that could break the ice and then get it going from there. So uh, Actually, I even have a better suggestion. Go to CuisineNoir.com <laughs> and that will give you all the education you'll need. Just keep on reading it. <laughs> And that'll, that'll equip you You're with good, what you need. Good. I love Fantastic. it. Thank you. Yeah. And I've okay. also been reading a book called uh, Power Entertaining. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, he, the guy's uh, the first American sommelier. Oh, nice. I haven't heard of that. Yeah. So I've been kind of doing a little a little bit of work, but uh, I, I don't want to fight naked, Dr. Bob. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that would help. It's a little bit of brushing up there, and you should be good. Actually, one Thank other you. thing, Ahmed certainly spe he specializes in financing. So you may want to down the road we can maybe connect you up and maybe Vishri can maybe give you some more insight on uh, some of the challenges and some of possible opportunities where you can find the need and fill it for some of these individuals who are needing help, especially because you said the number one thing is finances, mm -hmm. money. You may be, as we like to say, the solution to their problem. Right. And I'm definitely coming to the oh, event. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, thank Where are you I located, am. Ahmed? I'm sorry. I'm okay, in awesome. And then we're we're gonna be doing another event out your way in D, um, September 26th. More information to come on that. So um, fantastic. I'm looking uh -huh. forward to it. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good one. All right. Thank, All right. <laughs> thank you. So much. Wow, coming to your awesome. event. Bam. I'm yes. loving that. So this this wonderful event. Uh, yo, you can't give too much details <laughs> on you. I gotta, I, gotta zip my mouth. I gotta zip my mouth, but uh, for the for, for the people that you've shared it with, their reaction very just awesome. Um, and especially we have one person who registered, she's thinking about starting um, her own business, a restaurant in the restaurant industry, and so she's looking what to call it, what to how to move forward. So, this is perfect. I had another friend that came up to me. Oh, I'm going to get my husband to come to your event because he has this product that he's working on and he needs to be there. So I just love hearing stuff like that. Um, and then, you know, the other conversation we were having today um, is branding and how to brand yourself, the positive images out there to make sure what are you associating yourself with? Um, and so, you know, that's the other thing that we're going to talk about, too. Uh, there's a, a really great guy. His name is Darius. And he has, I mean, the food on his Instagram page are just like crazy delicious. And so he's talking about how he grew his business and catering over a million dollars using social media. That's powerful. Whoa. That's powerful. And so, yes. Now no, oh, so that is someone, how can you share that information with others who are looking to do the same? So I always say when we started this business, starting during an era where social media was really coming up, was one of was a great way to build your business without having all of this advertising, um, advertising dollars uh, that many of us may or may not have. And so being able to connect via social media, and I've been able to meet so many great people. Uh, via social media. Um, it's just been a wonderful thing. So those are the conversations uh, that we want to have. So, uh, And again, I, I'm not going to let you give away anything about the conference, but I know you've approached individuals to share. Yes. <laughs> and no, 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 I'm going, I'm not going uh, where you I'm, think I'm, I'm going. I'm like, are you talking about one in particular? But okay. <laughs> no, no, but uh how easy what has it been to get people to to participate from the sharing aspect for your conference? Because I know it's all about relationships. It is. You know, and I was thinking about that today, that everybody who I'm approaching on my list um, 
are someone that I have relationships with. And, and that's the other thing at the conference to discuss is don't let it be a touch base and then move away. You know, I, I can't do it that often, but I try to just reach out and say, hey, how are you doing? Don't want anything, but just seeing how things are going. And then when you're out, you know, taking people to various restaurants. Uh, you know, I love patronizing. When I have guests or somebody in town, I'll take them over to this restaurant. Um, so I love just doing that and just showing them, you know what, I'm in it. I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm definitely supporting you and, and things like that. So it's all about just building relationships so that and making making those positive deposits so that, you know, what if something like this comes up, th then it's not a hard conversation to have with someone. Does someone have to be in one of those industries to benefit from going to your conference? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, I think one, it's a great way to see who is doing what uh, and to share with others. Also, we're going to you know. So we're, we're, I think there's something for everybody. And especially for, again, if you're curious, maybe you have, you know, um, are thinking about it, who knows where you're at. Um, but no, we definitely welcome anybody um, that's whether they're in the industries or they're not. All are welcome. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, especially mm -hmm. if you're into food. Food is food is king. When I, I always find it fascinating how you just eat. How do you keep it all going? <laughs> you know, uh, and it's funny because I'm going to be taking a little break next week just to go somewhere, just to detox, relax, relax my mind. Um, you know, it, it's a juggle. Having that work-life balance, it's such a juggle. And so I'm still trying to figure it out, um, you know, and that's the other thing that can we all figure it out together? Because, you know, you're going to be working long hours uh, building your business. It's just a given. Um, and so I whether I try to step away to go for a hike, just walk around up the hills where I live or just something. I just I try to to keep it all together as best I can, Dr. Vibe. Go out for a good meal, have a glass of wine, something just to, you know, help me recharge. Are, are there any sp spots you go that when you're having that challenge, if, when you have that challenging day, what are some of the places you go to and it just U-turns it? In re a good restaurant or, or two that you can just, where just u turn You know, with the day. water. I just, I just go to the water. I will maybe pick up some ice cream or pick up something here um, in outside of Oakland and Emeryville. There's a place where you can just sit there at the marina, look over into San Francisco. And I just listen to the music and I just, just stop. That usually just recharges me. Water recharges me. Nice. What's your favorite Ooh, ice cream flavor? I love black walnut. I grew up on black walnut, Baskin Robbins. <laughs> Black walnut. I've never had. If you that. have a Baskin Robbins wow. up there, that I grew up with that, so that's number one. And then I get into my chocolate chip, my mint chocolate chips for sure. Which, which you bring up a very interesting point. From where you're sitting, how is the food industry changing? Because it's always evolving, and it's such a, especially with a food network and all. How is the industry changing, and what are you seeing? coming up in the near well, future. Well, you know, you're always, you know, it's always, they always name what is the ingredient of the year? So is it kale? Is, you know, the latest, one of the latest things is bone broth. Everybody getting into bone broth and, and just, you know, I was reading a thing about turmeric today. So there's always every year some ingredient or something that's taking the stage. Um, but I think you're seeing where, you know, fresh ingredients, it's all about growing your own food or getting food from as close to the source as possible. Um, oh, mango survey. I love mango survey too, Sandy. And, um, you know, so it's, <laughs> it, it's really changing. People's needs are also, so you're seeing a lot of gluten-free. Um, a lot of people, I was talking to a chef today, he did a month of vegan and he didn't really under, know that he would get such a great response. But a lot of people are, are getting into more vegan foods. And, and I like, you know, I like meat too, but I don't mind doing vegan just to switch it up and giving my body a break as well. So you're, you're really just starting to see more creative ways with savory and sweet dishes, different ingredients, um, and really going back to, um, going back to what we used to eat and things like that. So, so it's, it's very exciting to see what chefs and the industry are coming up with. You know, but I would say the one big right. kick now is everybody was sriracha, sriracha, sriracha. So now something has sriracha in it now. So, so it's, it's always interesting. 
Um, as we wind down here, I know that one of the conversations we've had, we have periodically is the lack of chefs of color on television. Would you like to share about your thoughts on that? You know, I just want to see diversity overall um, on regular, you know, shows, definitely when it comes to judging, if whether you're judging Iron Chef and things like that. Uh, just making sure that, you know, Marcus Samuelson is great, but, you know, there are other great judges out there and sh chefs that can be judged. Um, so, you know, just again, um, just that, is there an opportunity out there to continue to diversify the different shows on the Food Network, on uh, Bravo, outside of reality, um, and things like that. So, and so hopefully we're an agent that can say, you know, if you're looking for, you know, but I will say a success story is that um, we were approached from a show that would that I watch uh, when I'm just looking to do everyday cooking stuff, and they were looking to diversify. I don't know if, if I can announce or, or talk about the show because it's in the works, but um, you know they were looking to diversify their staff. So we did send out um, a request saying, you know what, the show is you know hiring da 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 da, and one of our chefs that we work with actually did land a position. So very excited hey. about that. So. So it's happening. It's happening that, you know, workplaces are really starting to reflect the populations as a whole in terms of um, who, you know, who's in the country and things like that. So it's, that's exciting. That's encouraging. Nice. Well, I know your time is tight. So any last words you'd like to share with us before we let you go? Because I know you're going to be back with us soon. Yeah, so we'll be back soon. No, just thank you. Thank you for everyone that tuned in today. I appreciate everyone. Um, definitely check us out um, as we're growing. Um, you know, it's been it's just been a great journey. Um, and I met so many great people along the way and continue to meet so many great people. And just wanted to thank everyone for just um, seeing how we're going to continue to grow and and all of that good stuff. So more to come. Lots of great things to come this year. Excellent. Well, I've put the website address in the uh, chat section. So if people want to find out more, and I encourage you to uh, find out more about Cuisine Noir, not only the magazine, but if you're in the San Francisco area during that conference, because I know Leyla is somewhat close. She's out on in the California area. We hope to see you out there. We <laughs> expect to see you out there because I know you love yeah. your food. And, love, and there may be one or two people that you know that will be out there too. Yeah. So we're just going to leave it at that. So, <laughs> so yeah. funny, Dr. Bob. Yeah, the cat, the, so definitely check out Cuisine Noir. There's the lady in charge here. Reach so out to fun. her. I am done. Well, there's more to come. Thank you for twisting my more arm, finally getting me on here. <laughs> well, hey, I am Curtis Brooks. Love your website. Thank you, Curtis. This is nice. Also follow on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Um, oh, you know what? One other thing you can mention that you can talk about, brand ambassador. Yes. And guess who is one of our number one I Am Cuisine Noir ambassador, Dr. Vibe. So thank you. So, yes. Yeah, so we have our I Am Cuisine Noir campaign that just whenever anyone is in their food, travel, wine, great Coca-Cola moment. I love Pepsi myself moments um just you know hashtag that photo with i am cuisine noir we just love seeing how people are enjoying those moments with food wine beverages whatever the case may be around the world so and thank yes, you and, uh, for I, being I, one of our brand ambassadors well, and spreading the word about cuisine noir well thank you and uh, now anytime i'm going out socially i have my camera <laughs> with me it's addictive huh uh, it's addictive and I love taking, and I'm not too much of a meat eater, but uh, two weekends ago I was at a conference and it was uh, a Saturday conference and the Friday night, a bunch of us went out and said, you know what? I, I, you know what? Actually, whenever I go to a restaurant, I always ask the wait staff, what is a good mm. meal? I always ask them that just to see if they're on mm -hmm. their game. And uh, I told the waiter, I'm really hungry. <laughs> he said, okay. Well, and I was, I was ravenous. So he, he told me to order steak. And usually I do not order steak wow. at restaurants. But I, I got to tell you, this steak was money. Mm, sounds good. It was really, I was, let me put it this way. When I was done, I said to myself, stick me with a fork, I'm done. <laughs> 
Sounds good to me. That sounds really good. So uh, I do. I do have. I do have pictures of it. I've got to get to the I am because you are hashtag. But yeah, if folks, if you're out, whether it's a friend's house, a party, or, or a restaurant, take the pictures. Uh, I'm going to type the hashtag here. And uh, definitely support the Cuisine Noir movement. I am Cuisine Noir. Noir. There's the hashtag right there. And uh, so we got we got to get, get out of here because yeah. Street has got to run. So as always, I'm Dr. Vibe. As always, you're blessed and highly favored. You're a magnet for miracles and your solution for someone's problem. You can catch me here on Blab at the D R V I B E S H R. No, oh, it's Sandy typed it in for me. You can also <laughs> catch me on Cuisine Noir because I'm now writing blog posts on Cuisine Noir behind at their behind the business yes. blog. So uh, I'm, and that's got me energized. So I have to thank Vishri for allowing me to get out of my comfort zone because most people know from me from verbal video. So now I'm getting into the writing zone. So you're going to see some more stuff from Dr. Vibe. That's it. Thank you, everyone. That's all. Thank you so much, as always. Uh, thank you so much. And if you're sticking around in an hour's time, I'm doing another blab and the title, another boring subject. Why don't men show love? <laughs> good luck with that one. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So good night, good night, everybody. Keep blessed. Bye bye. -bye.